Hello all you awesome people out there, my name is Akira and welcome back to this let's play of Doki Doki Literature Club. And as uh, the last time I still have uh, Momo with me to read all the girls voices. Hello. And she got blown away by my voice apparently <laughs> because you make facts all over the place and swirling arms. I just enjoy the music. So but um... As last time, we had to choose um, some wordings uh, for the next forum that we're gonna write for tomorrow. So, and we will do it as last time, where I take a word and Momo takes the words. Um, and so we have all the 20 words we need. So, I will start out with the fireflies. Fireflies. Then I'll take the uh, inferno. Then I will take. Um, smile. Then I'll take games. <laughs> then I will take um, Doki Doki. Doki. <laughs> then I'll take Fickle. I will take um, Melody. Then I take P P Starsky. <laughs> I will take. Um, bunny. Bunny. Mm, then I take depression. Oh god. Um. Bouncy. Sorry about that. That was my Facebook sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Is me? Yes. Yeah. Um, then I take daydream. Then I will take um, um nibble. 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 <laughs> nibble. Nibble. <laughs> <laughs> Got a Let's take horror. I will take um uh, passion. I take clumsy. I will take shiny. And I take broken. Uh, lollipop. <laughs> and the last word word will be bubbles. Another day passed, and it's time for the club meeting already. I got a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene gets me. Hi, new kid! Yo, Sayori! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hey, hey, hey! I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always a simple thing with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Yeah, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reasons, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervously reaches. Uh, which tries her coin purse. Retrieves her coin purse, god dang it. She fumbles with the lid and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets it counter spill into the disc. Onto the disc. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can't I can't see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. 
If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted to uh, and used to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that it would lend you some. But there's no. Uh, but there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that only leaves the one option. <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you're guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> you suddenly giggles. Hey. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, at the, as always. Huh? I, I wasn't listening on anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell new kid to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Mm. Ah! Did I just... Ah, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't have much. But it's fun. It's a fun side of you. That's. There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. <laughs> that. <laughs> Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of, inside all of us, isn't there? Hehehe. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. So you knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Yuri in the face and tumbles into the disc. Ow! What was. A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry, it uh, lands around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Which <Where's your> beauty? <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Haha. <laughs> Natsuki. That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! So you hugs the cookie. <laughs> Jeez, just eat it already. So Yuri rapidly tears open the wrapping and take a big bite. Sure, good! <laughs> so you suddenly uh, clasp her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still... I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah 
has these. I get it, I get it. Cook is still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to not say Yuri off uh, to her. Oh! Serio suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, hey! Did you just seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful Sayuri uh, throws away to safety. Yuri and I have that as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? There's a good glance around. Monica isn't in the classroom. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just has something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Hey. You don't think she... She has a... Haha. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She... She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hey, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Hey. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica Chris uh Chris glanced at me. Uh never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Aha. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play for us some. Uh, play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks uh, at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case. I would let uh, I won't let you down, new kid. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ahaha, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd like to love the chance. Uh, I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, Best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. I choose to leave out Sayuri's mysterious escape. Escapade. <laughs> I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yui is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Go to Narnia! <laughs> I heard Natsuki utter an exhausted sigh from within the closet. She seemed to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if something, uh, someone else is gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacks, uh, stacked books 
and box it across the shelves. Manga? You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of the things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I, I see. There's a, a long, there's a long, long, long. There's a long volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of the, one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There, uh, there it is. As I could snatch it out of my hand. She then turns uh, to the box of manga and slip it the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ha! Much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a close look at the box, it's, it's a Mari. Puff it, girls. It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points at the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, new kid. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact... Nazuki pulls out the first volume of the, the Papfoot Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Uh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful uh, attire, strike, huh? attire. attire striking animated feminine poses. She's exaggeratedly moe. Don't just stand there. Uh, Natalie grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windows. She pats on the ground next to her, signing me to sit here. Wouldn't chairs be much more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, what's that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Hey. Don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Nasuki crosses her arms and scorches an inch away from me. S sorry. I didn't exactly accept, uh, expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I, not that I can't say it's, particularly bad th it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Nasuki once again itches closer. Reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulders, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and uh, flip through the old volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I o I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Huh? I am, but nothing really happens yet, so I can't talk uh, at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typically a slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writer to be entertaining enough to uh, make up for the lack of plot. So... What should I expect from this? 
is there going to be plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that do didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's, uh, there's a really funny chapter where, they, uh, where they're obsessed with a guy in the ice cream shop. But that, uh, but that just helps you to get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get into all the backstories and when some of the romance start to happen. That's really what makes it good. There are so many touching parts. Uh, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, Nefuki gives me a little shower. I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full power. Good save. <laughs> this chapter seems like it's about baking. That is just... This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah? Why does that matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. It, I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got into this manga. Like, I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. Haha. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple chapters at this point. Mm. Are you sure this isn't boring at, uh, for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing, uh, sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what that? Uh, you know what I mean. Hmm. Hmm. You don't. Um. Oh. <laughs> um. That's not. Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, uh, sorry. Like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who, judge, uh, who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loose, so I guess I gravitate towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. 
Ugh, I can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you are enjoying yourself, right? Hmm. Hmm. So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Suddenly Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happened. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki voice bargains with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can't under uh, I can't understand I can't understand her. Uh, I can't understand why. <laughs> it's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connected with someone like that, and being able to provide uh, uh, that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Eh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Today's poems? <laughs> uh. Oh, come on! Could your timing be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. So you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> yeah. ah. Natsuki suddenly noticed how close she's gotten to me. She harshly slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright. Yes, I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you know what no don't you want to know what happens? Oh uh, yeah, but Monica just said Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that real or right? I say that mostly because I really uh, didn't plan uh, on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would be it, it would take forever to finish if we didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. If it and if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow. I only get part uh, way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice. It's a change for seeing Natsuki in Turiastic's face. Oh, I am more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it. All right then. I stand up. I would. Uh, I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem to first? So let's just take Natsuki this time. Hmm. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now she must have read it more than once. Uh, aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? No, no I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Y yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know. 
Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I mean... I mean, well written. No, I mean... Uh, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No! Why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. That's if you shows my poem back towards me. <laughs> Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's not too cute and doki doki. I would only impress, you know, uh, it would only impress, you know, girls who like those kinds of things. Haha. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. I like how the music changes, it's so cute. This is a long one. <laughs> <coughs> well. Amy likes spiders. <clears throat> you know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, <laughs> not bad, right? It's it, quite a bit longer than. Mm, <laughs> it's <laughs> quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. It was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you have to explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who uh, anyone would agree that the subject in this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... Uh, that doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. Uh, it can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find... Uh, if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as you're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. So, next up is Yuri. Let's see what you... <coughs> Voice change. <coughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, new kid. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? Yeah? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help an 
uh, to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry too much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander in uh, through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That is a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you arrived from today? You not and seemingly hands her, m me her poem. <clears throat> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread far, uh, for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a, uh, of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my sub subconscious well aware of the consequences. Uh, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps, uh, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic pavilion conditioning. I slice the bread and I feel myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault. <laughs> I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagine, uh, imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the feeling, uh, the way it feels for me to indulge in more in my more in unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep for, uh, to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh? That's funny. Hmm? Did Natsuki also write something about that? Uh, that? About something being uh, ridiculed for a strange interest. Yeah? She... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not uh, uh, hurting people... Uh, hurting anybody. She... she's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two ha uh, have that in common. That's... well... that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? 
Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Uh, I might be rending a little bit now. But I'm glad you're a good listener. And Monica. Hi again, new kid. How is the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here we go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, I like it, new kid. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Aha! <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think about something that Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Uh, maybe a long time ago? He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing and even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would own uh, that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler, uh, much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super, super challenging to get the meaning uh, through. So I can see why you would like your, uh, it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like it. Uh, I like the way this one turned out. So I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Uh, cacophony? Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust an endless poem of meaningless load me hmm it's even more abstract than your last one huh <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write I'm sorry if you don't like it no I, I never said that it's just a kind of thing i never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abs as abstract as a physical expression of feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not, own not every poem is about, uh, is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you feel, uh, you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. 
Thanks for listening. Tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have um, Sayuri left, so. Yep. Mm. New cat. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh, no way. Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think that's it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Hey? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, okay, idiots! I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Yeah. I don't know if I understand. Ugh. I never understand when I try uh, to exp uh, explain things to you. Do you, Sayuri? I pat Sayuri's head. Ha <laughs> ha Hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe? Sayuri starts uh, fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, new kid. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> uh, sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! I broke my pencil. Sherry had uh, hastily uh, bent down to pick out the pencil she dropped. But being inactivated of her surroundings, she bumped right into me. So, so sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick out the broken pencil. So you cluttedly uh, clutters the disc beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayuri. Yeah. I grab Sayuri's arm and help her sit on the, uh, sit at the disc. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Besides, it's not as good as yours. <sighs> Don't worry. I'm sure I like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's a, uh, it's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put it, uh, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes. Uh, me lots of friends each bottle a starlight to make amends sometimes my friends feel a certain way 
down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my finger goes. Ah, my finger go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up in, uh, and in come my friends. In they come, uh, in they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I fr frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to e to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shots all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, sometime, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in a... Uh, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being uh, cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, I came. <laughs> it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten... Oh. Uh, you've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it in no, uh, in no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the pa uh, passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be present, uh, pessimistic. Okay everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. We really, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori. So oh, sorry. <laughs> so you. Uh who've been calling a poster, holding up uh, for us to see. 
Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to put going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imaging is you shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot of it's a lot to ask for them to recite the poem out loud a whole uh, to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We are the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that w uh, what literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And in those, uh, it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Mm. Natsuki and Yuri uh, remain silent. So he looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The last we can do is to help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any argument left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm -hmm. Yuri detectively glanced around at everyone else expe uh, ex expre ex <laughs> expecting. Ex Expectant. Expected face. Fucking dang it. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Oh, Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers. Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook uh, to a specific poem she has in, in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins re uh, reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her in uh, inflection is uh, pristine. pristine. She knows exactly how to apply motion behind each, of, uh, each line she recites, uh, beginning the words of uh, bringing the words to life. If she somehow, it is something she's done before, or is it simply unnatural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. 
Zero looks amazed. Yui has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. That I on a face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished the reaction. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. A breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? <clears throat> I'll go next. Wah! Yuri is fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutters, uh, clutters a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. Uh, this poem is called... <laughs> Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets uh, absorbed into her books. Her quibbling words transform into a shape of uh, sell syllables for a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its stature that she inerts with perfect timing. This might be a red limbs into the wailing fire Yui keeps uh, concealed inside her head. Suddenly she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yui snaps back into really, uh, reality and glances around her as if she bewildered every, even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm at the... I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and I give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off guard uh, that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Look at Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops up to the chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ha. Ha ha ha. Sorry I giggled. <laughs> Sayuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself in, like in front of the mirror or in your own head. It's your poem's poem, so it'll come out the best way that way. I see, I see. Okay then. So Yuri begins to perform, uh, begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her sub voice was made f uh, as a perfect match. The poem is, isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayuri is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayuri's voice almost gives me a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayuri meant when she said she likes my poem. It's like I get. It's like I get to read more deeply into someone's thought. I thought into someone I thought I knew through, through and through. So we finish and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayuri. <laughs> Even you kid liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poem uh, that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Yeah, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. It might need a bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. 
Oh, I know what you mean. That's, uh, well, what I've been practicing. Uh, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It, uh, it's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before a new kid. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let new kid lower everyone's standards a little bit before I do. Natsuki? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I, rec uh, I, re uh, I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finished, I received applause uh, applause everywhere. Anyway, anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry so, uh, about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki, uh, bagur dingly. <laughs> Be begrudgingly. Okay. <laughs> Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Darn you! <laughs> God damn, Steve Prince! <laughs> Why is she still a little... Uh, her poem has a rhythm and, rip, uh, and rhyme to it. It's actually its trademark style. And it works uh, surprisingly well when spoken out loud. Goddamn Ausla! <laughs> <laughs> Puts me like they're bouncing up and down as if giving life to the poem. Let's go finish and everyone applaud. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't too bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever faces, uh, whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have to worry about uh, worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you are putting it all uh, you're putting all in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh yeah, no problem. Okay everyone. I think that's 
about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, so let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll, be, uh, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same materialism as Yuri and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I have to do my best. Ready to go home, Sayuri? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Guys. That would make it sound like a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice though. Well... Uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, New Kid. You don't have to say... Uh, you don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayuri? Hmm? Oh, sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no Rhonda. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayuri uh, fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> God dang it, choices! <laughs> If she's the first one to ask, I will probably walk home with her, so... I'll probably say Natsuki. Walk home with Natsuki, huh. Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean... I think it would be... I think I would be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's no, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you, Sayuri. I can't figure out how you're uh, seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation tails off and I live feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with this sort of question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? That music. So, but that concludes today's... Um, fun at this club in the school and yeah with that um, we will uh, look at this uh, the next time and it's always so yeah I'm stumbling on my words right now yep. <laughs> anyways I hope you enjoyed this episode you can give it a thumb up if you did you can write a comment down below you can subscribe for more awesome videos and I hope you all will have an awesome day so until next time
farewell。